Lord encountered me and awakened me. It'll be eight years this month. And I don't think I've ever been so afraid and sobered and awake than I am right now. And I just want you to ask the Lord to help your heart receive the word that he's given. Well, there's a lot I thought I was going to talk about tonight until I opened my Bible and the Lord said, you're going to say this. Um, and then I remembered this dream and I said, yes, Lord, because I opened the Bible to to the scripture she sent. I, I wasn't planning on sharing this dream, but the Lord says, so we say yes. We say yes. So I want her to share this dream, and then we're going to read a lot of the Bible. Get your Bibles ready if you need one. Ask somebody to go get one for you. This may be one of the most important serv services you've ever been a part of. I'm not saying it is, and it's certainly not because of me. But we need to wake up. We need to wake up. I'd rather lose everyone and everything around me than lose Jesus. He's rebuked to me more this week than I've been rebuked in a while. And I'm thankful. So gentle and so kind. He's so merciful. To all our visitors, welcome. I just posted This sermon will not be about Russia or our war or politics. This is about the church. I just posted, and the reason I asked her to share her dream is when I opened the word, I opened to if my people will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. I've written songs about this. I've talked about this a lot. We're going to go into more of what is he really saying? What is he saying? What is he saying? The reason I'm going so slowly is I don't want to say one word he's not. I just wrote a post. Hey, church, do you know what's after your children? The demons behind the idols you've worshipped the ones you've been willing to sacrifice them to because of the inter entertainment you crave. It's time to repent while there is still time. We don't need a change in government as desperately as we need a change in the heart of the church. Return to God before Jesus returns. Okay, so if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. That is Second Chronicles 7, 14. Let's go to Second Chronicles 6. In 2 Chronicles 5, it talks about how Solomon had finished all his work on the temple of the Lord. And it's so beautiful. The ark is brought to the temple. 
Let's just read five. So Solomon finished all his work on the temple of the Lord. You can stop if you want because I'm going to be reading a long time. I love you, Austin. Thank you. Solomon finished all his work on the temple of the Lord. Then he brought all the gifts his father David had dedicated, the silver, the gold, and the various articles, and he stored them in the treasuries of the temple of God. Now who is the temple? Okay. Please don't forget that. Solomon then summoned to Jerusalem the elders of Israel and all the heads of tribes, the leaders of the ancestral families of Israel. They were to bring the ark of the Lord's covenant to the temple from its location in the city of David, also known as Zion. So all the men of Israel assembled before the king at the annual festival of shelters, which is held in early autumn. One thing that I'm praying changes rapidly is that much more than we're focused on asking God to heal our pain and bring us a breakthrough and bring deliverance so we feel better that we ask him to take our sin. And I don't mean just be forgiven of the sin we're committing. I'm talking about not being so focused on being free of our pain so that we feel better, but to be free of sin so we don't grieve the Lord. Free of sin so we do not grieve the Lord, thinking much more about he feels, how he feels, than how we feel. Much, much more about how God feels than how we feel. I know the glasses are funny. I appreciate you all not laughing at me. They were to bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to the temple from its location in the city of David, also known as Zion. So all the men of Israel assembled before the king at the annual festival of shelters, which is held in early autumn. When all the elders of Israel arrived, the Levites picked up the Ark. The priests and Levites brought up the Ark along with the special tent and all the sacred items that had been in it. There before the Ark, King Solomon and the entire community of Israel sacrificed so many sheep, goats, and cattle that no one could keep count. Then the priest carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant into the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and placed it beneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread their wings over the Ark, forming a canopy over the Ark and its carrying poles. These poles were so long that their ends could be seen from the holy place, which is in front of the most holy place, but not from the outside. They are still there to this day. Nothing was in the ark except the two stone tablets that Moses had placed in it at Mount Sinai, where the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they left Egypt. Speaking of leaving Egypt and wanting deliverance, they had prayed and cried out, to be delivered from their pain. Did it do them any good years later? They all died in the wilderness because of their sin. They wanted to be free of their bondage and their pain, but they died because of their sin, their idolatrous hearts. Then the priests left the holy place. Thank you, Austin. All the priests who were present had purified themselves, whether or not they were on duty that day in the name of Jesus. All the priests who were present had purified themselves, whether or not they were on duty that day. And the Levites who were musicians, Asaph, human Jedathan and all their sons and brothers were dressed in fine linen robes and stood at the east side of the altar playing cymbals, lyres, and harps. They were joined by 120 priests who were playing trumpets. The trumpeteers and singers performed together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord, accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments. They raised their voices and praised the Lord with these words, He is good. 
His faithful love endures forever. At that moment, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord. The priests could not continue their service because of the cloud, for the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple of God. How many times has, have we as a church encountered him in his glory? How many miracles? We can't count them, can we? How many hours just, as we say, stuck in the presence, the heavy, weighty glory of God? Do you know that after the Lord encountered me and I started encountering his presence, I had never even heard of his presence. I had never heard a teaching on the glory of God. I went and asked a Hasidic Jewish rabbi, what am I encountering? And he said, you have a direct connection with God. How did you get it? And I said, he encountered me. Tell me about it. But do you know that God did not? I, I, would, I would wake up at 3 in the morning, and he would say, come meet with me. Come talk to me. Weeks and weeks and weeks. 3 in the morning. One morning, I kind of didn't want to go, and an angel tapped me on the shoulder and said, go. Do you know what the Lord talked to me about? Now, I was encountering the glory so strong. I was in the Hindu temple, miracles, Muslims being healed at a garage sale, bringing their family to our church, our little house, falling out in the glory, more and more miracles, miracles everywhere. God did not teach me how to get the glory. For a year straight, you remember this, don't you? For a year straight, he would say, come. And my Bible would open to the glory departing from the temple. He didn't talk to me about how to get the glory. He talked to me about not losing it. Him. 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 Today he's talking to me again. We can be so focused on how do we get the glory. The glory, the glory of who? God. It is not even about how we feel. It's about how he feels. You know why he comes? Because he likes what he hears. You know why he leaves? He doesn't like what he hears. You know why he comes? He likes what he sees. You know why he leaves? He doesn't like what he sees. I know that I can be a little much sometimes, but what you're seeing for me is nothing like what he's, how he's dealing with me. Okay. Then Solomon prayed. I, I want us to get us up to everybody. Everybody knows once COVID hit, everybody started hearing, well, let's get together and humble ourselves. Maybe he'll do something. What a shame. Humbling ourselves, turning from our wicked ways should never be another trick to try to get God to do something. Humbling ourselves and turning from our ways should be because we are sorry for our sins and how we have grieved our God. We shouldn't try methods to see if we can get him to fix us. Fix America. Maybe if we have more prayer meetings, the cloud will fill our church. Are you kidding me? Those who hunger and thirst after glory? No, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. The glory, glory comes, follows righteousness, and leaves with unrighteousness. So we've heard for a long time now, my people will humble themselves, right? Hasn't worked. Nobody's getting what they were trying to get. Because the motives are wrong. He's not a, a, a trick show. He's not a vending machine. This is God we're talking about. God Almighty, and I don't want anyone to come 
just to a, a great, we've just figured out how to have church and how to get the glory and how to help you get your healing and help you get your deliverance. You know how easy it would be for us to focus on that now? How can we help everybody? How can we not grieve God? Because we're not, you're not, you're going to stand and face your Savior and your judge. We're helping get a bride ready for her wedding day. We're not getting y'all ready for an eternal church service, thank God. I, I felt the Lord asked me this morning, he said, so do you really want to help them be ready to meet me? Are you willing just to keep helping them like each other and be okay with you? Every, everything, I would apologize to visitors, but I can't. Sorry. I love you all. Come back. It might be more. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the Lord is doing something in me, and I don't ever want it to stop. Jesus is coming. We're, we're, we're not just here because now we have a little revival church, and people come from everywhere. Because it's true. People are starting to move from everywhere. We encounter God here, and it's awesome. But we're going to encounter God face to face. With no chords playing and no warm-up and no... We're going to meet him face to face. And I want us to be at least a little prepared for what he likes and what he doesn't like. So this, so, so we've heard my people call by my name, and we've heard about the glory filling the temple. Let's just, let's just read on, right? Then Solomon prayed, O oh Lord, you have said that you would live in a thick cloud of darkness. Now I have built a glorious temple for you, a place where you can live forever. Then the king turned around to the entire community of Israel standing before him and gave this blessing. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who has kept the promise he made to my father David. For he told my father, from the day I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I have never chosen a city among any of the tribes of Israel as the place where a temple should be built to honor my name. Nor have I chosen a king to lead my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem as the place for my name to be honored. And I have chosen David to be king over my people Israel. Then Solomon said, My father David wanted to build this temple to honor the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord told him, You, oh Jesus. I want us to be so close to God, we know what he's saying to us. Do you know what God is saying to you? Do you know what God is saying to you? Do you have ears to hear what he's saying to the church? The Lord told him, you wanted to build the temple to honor my name. Your intention is good, but you are not the one to do it. One of your own sons will build the temple to honor me. And now the Lord has fulfilled the promise he made. For I have become king in my father's place. And now I sit on the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised. I have built this temple to honor the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. There I have placed the ark, which contains the covenant that the Lord made with the people of Israel. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the entire community of Israel, and he lifted his hands in prayer. Now Solomon had made a bronze platform, seven and a half feet long, seven and a half feet wide, four and a half feet high, and had placed it at the center of the temple's outer courtyard. He stood on the platform, and then he knelt in front of the entire community of Israel and lifted his hands toward heaven. He prayed, O oh Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in all of heaven and earth. You keep your covenant and show unfailing love to all, say all, all. 
who walk before you in wholehearted devotion. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. You made that promise with your own mouth and with your own hands have fulfilled it. You have fulfilled it today. And now, O oh Lord, God of Israel, carry out the additional promise you made to your servant David, my father. For you said to him, if your descendants guard their behavior and faithfully follow my law as you have done. Now, Christ has fulfilled the law, right? All right. We remember this is Old Testament. We do. We remember this, right? But it's the same God. Same God. One of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. Now, O oh Lord, now, now our king is Jesus, right? Okay. Our king is Jesus, right? No king, no president, okay? Our king is Jesus, right? Pray for our presidents, all of them. Now, O oh Lord God of Israel, fulfill this promise to your servant David. But will God really live on earth among people? Why, even the highest heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Nevertheless, listen to my prayer and my plea, O Lord my God. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is making to you. May you watch over this temple day and night. This place where you have said you would put your name. May you always hear the prayers I make toward this place. May you hear the humble and earnest request from me and your people Israel when we pray toward this place. Yes, hear us from heaven where you live, and when you hear, forgive. If someone wrongs another person and is required to take an oath of innocence in front of your altar at this temple, then hear from heaven and judge between your servants, the accuser and the accused. Pay back the guilty as they deserve. Acquit the innocent because of their innocence. We're innocent now because of whose blood? Amen. We're all innocent if we have repented of our sins and placed our trust in Jesus Christ. If your people Israel are defeated by their enemies because they have sinned against you, and if they turn back and acknowledge your name and pray to you here in this temple, remembering we are the temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and return them to this land you gave to them and to their ancestors. If the skies are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you and if they pray toward this temple and acknowledge your name and, name and turn from their sins because you have punished them, then hear from heaven and forgive the sins of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them to follow the right path and send rain on your land that you have given to your people as their special possession. If there is a famine in the land or a plague or crop disease or attacks of locusts or caterpillars or if your people's enemies are in the land besieging their towns, whatever disaster or disease there is, and if your people Israel pray about their troubles or sorrow, raising their hands toward this temple, then hear from heaven where you live and forgive. Now he lives in this temple. Remember, give your people what their actions deserve, for you alone know each human heart. Then they will fear you and walk in your ways as long as they live in the land you gave to our ancestors. In the future, foreigners who do not belong to your people, Israel, will hear of you. They will come from distant lands when they hear of your great name and your strong hand and your powerful arm. And when they pray toward this temple, then hear from heaven where you live and grant what they ask of you. In this way, all the people of the earth will come to know and fear you just as your own people Israel do. 
They too will know that this temple I have built honors your name. If your people go out where you send them to fight their enemies, and if they pray to you by turning toward this city you have chosen and toward this temple I have built to honor your name, then hear their prayers from heaven and uphold their cause. If they sin against you, and who has never sinned? (laughs) You might become angry with them and let their enemies conquer them and take them captive to a foreign land far away or near. But in that land of exile, they might turn to you in repentance and pray, We have sinned, done evil, and acted wickedly. If they turn to you with their whole heart and soul in the land of their captivity and pray toward the land you gave to their ancestors, toward this city you have chosen and toward this temple I have built to honor your name. Then hear their prayers and their petitions from heaven where you live and uphold their cause. Forgive your people who have sinned against you. Oh, my God, may your eyes be open and your ears attentive to all the prayers made to you in this place. And now arise, O Lord God, and enter your resting place. Now, I could stop right there and preach a camp meeting service. Because now we are his resting place, except we have entered his rest over and over and over. And we felt him rest on us for how many years has it been? We need to keep reading. Along with the ark, the symbol of your power, may your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. May your loyal servants rejoice in your goodness. O Lord God, do not reject the king you have anointed. Remember your unfailing love for your servant David. When Solomon finished praying, fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the burnt offerings and sacrifices. And the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. The priest could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glorious presence of the Lord filled it. When all the people of Israel saw the fire coming down and the glorious presence of the Lord filling the temple, they fell face down on the ground and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices to the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. And so the king and all the people dedicated the temple of God. Now think about all that because they were so appreciative of the presence of God and they wanted to obey him. We come and experience the presence of God and walk out and get a hamburger. Right? We're not only not giving (laughs) our cattle to God. We just go get one already cooked up for us. I'm just saying we have it so easy. Thank God Jesus Christ came and became the sacrifice. But now we are the living sacrifice. Because of his sacrifice, because he has made us holy, we give our bodies back to him. We give our lives back to him. And my concern is we have learned how to get the glory. But what about offending his glory? Have we become too accustomed to his glory? Because you can get so comfortable in his glory, you never know that he left. You never even know. Churches across America have had no idea that the glory has left the building. The glory has left the building. And I'm not talking right now about other churches because the Lord has had his finger in my face. A 
I'd rather lose everyone. And I would rather, I hope you don't, but I would rather everybody get up and walk out and not lose Jesus. I couldn't care less. I told someone, uh, I told Angelica this morning on the phone, people used to think I was weird and maybe mean. I couldn't care less what anybody thinks anymore. But God told me I have been. I have been caring. I don't know what's about to happen around here because I'm not the orchestrator. But I know that we are not going to sit here and try to bring the glory. And we haven't. We've never focused on that. We've, we really haven't. We haven't even prayed for revival. People from all over, other countries, are like, we've heard pastors say, I'm thinking of resigning where I am and just come be with y'all. Multiple. Because of the glory. I'm not thinking of how to get his glory Sunday morning. I'm thinking, God, I don't want to lose you. plan more prayer meetings and people's hearts aren't even right with God. I don't want sinners in here praying for revival. I'm not calling anybody's sin out. God's been pointing out my own and me. Fear of man. When earlier this week, there was this big, I don't know, some of y'all have seen it. I, I see only a little bit of what's going on in the world. I'm not suggesting it. I'm just saying it's it's... And, and I see all this big, wow, oh, those things. Oh, those things that hurt our children. Are you kidding? They just crossed your line? It's like this to cross your line? How about the opening lines, the magic kingdom? How about the very opening? How about they told you what they were as, as soon as they've ever been? As long as there's ever been. I'm not here to preach about that. I'm just saying, wake up. The God of the Bible is the God of us. He's the same God. And the same things please him and the same things grieve him. And at Judgment Day, he's not going to call for everybody from 2021. He's not going to judge you according to your favorite pastor, your favorite worship leader. Or your favorite Instagram personality. He's going to judge you according to his word. The Bible says, let the godly pray while there is still time that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. And so yesterday when I saw a few people like making a big deal on Instagram, just a few people I follow, I'm like, well, finally somebody's speaking out about it. We've known this for years. The one time I did try to talk about it, about 12 to 20 people left because they love their Disney. I'm not just sitting here preaching against Disney. I'm preach I used to be paid by Disney for years. I was a Disney artist. I'm not saying, I'm not talking about politics or Disney. I, I know I'm saying it, but I'm not. I'm talking about sin and righteousness. Almost every pastor I know loves Disney. And it's a devil. And why did it take this to discern that? What, who do we love? If we, make our, if we want to be a friend of the world, we make ourselves an enemy of God, the Bible says. If we want to be a friend of the world, we make ourselves an enemy of God. And so the Lord firmly rebuked me. He said, yes, you've known for years, and you feel your children are safe. What about the other ones? Why haven't you told the other ones? Because when you tried, people left. <laughs> Don't mess with people's comfort. Don't mess with their entertainment. Don't mess with their idols. They might get mad at you. I, I 
when I heard to say something a couple of days ago, and I'd completely forgotten about it till Baylor shared a dream with me. She said the other night in her dream, she had her phone, and I'll talk about all this later. There is something I want to say. But she said she had her phone out in church, and I walked up and said, Get off the phone. I said, take it from Jesus. That was Jesus. Get off the phone. Get off the internet. Get off the TV. Get off whatever wants to drag you to hell. Get out of whatever wants to take the glory of God from your life. Stop thinking about the glory of God as a nice drug that takes your pain. And see it as God's pleasure. The glory of God is not a fog machine. It doesn't turn on when Kevin, when Kevin or Austin starts playing the chords. He comes, as Roland Baker says, where he's wanted. And it's not our righteousness that saves us. It is a beautiful, how many, how many of you experience, and you know you did, a life change from Wednesday night on the live stream? Raise your hand high and keep them up. I want to, but keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Okay, praise the Lord, and we're going to do more testimonies about it. If you didn't watch it, go watch Wednesday night live stream. Kevin and I at home, and I couldn't stop crying, and big hair. Who cares? <laughs> anyway, and it's all love. It was all about God's desire, but see, this is too. You know what the earth is going to be burned by? The fire of his jealousy. The earth will be destroyed by the fire of God's jealousy. He is so jealous for us. You know why? Because we're not our own. We belong to him. He has every right to be jealous. Amen. And the only place we're safe is in him. So his jealousy is kindness. It's not cruel. The kindest thing he could be is jealous for us. He wants us back where we're safe. It's all his desire. It's his desire for a people that his desire will be enough for. We turn to idols. We make ourselves idols because we long to be desired. We turn to idols because we desire something other than God. We, but we, we set ourselves up as idols, American idols, Jesus. because we long to be desired by someone other than God. Amen. And it is despicable. And it is so normal that anybody not doing that is looked at as crazy, not just in the world, but in the church. If you are truly devoted to God, you are a spectacle. Who cares? They're not going to be your judge. Nobody else can save you. Nobody else made you. And nobody else will judge you. I thank God no man will be my judge. I thank God. It is God I will stand before because he is the most merciful. He is the kindest. He is love. He is love. He doesn't just have love. He is love. And when he can be enough, we're safe forever. Forever. I'm going to skip to the Lord's response. Second Chronicles 7:11. So Solomon finished the temple of the Lord as well as the royal palace.
He completed everything he had planned to do in the construction of the temple and the palace. Then one night, the Lord appeared to Solomon <laughs> and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this temple as the place for making sacrifices. At times, I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. I think much of the church got on the humble ourselves bandwagon just to heal the land because they don't think they're sinners. But this would not be happening in our land if the church weren't sinners. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. For I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it, for it is dear to my heart. As for you, if you faithfully follow me as David your father did, was David perfect? No, he was an adulterer and a murderer. But he always returned. He trusted, I believe he was a man after God's own heart because he trusted God's heart. He did not stay away from God. You couldn't pay him to stay away from God. He would run back with everything he had because he trusted the kindness and mercy of God. Then I will establish the throne of your dynasty, for I made this covenant with your father David when I said, one of your descendants will always rule over Israel. But if you or your descendants abandon me and disobey the decrees and commands I have given you, and if you serve and worship other gods, then I will uproot the people from this land that I have given them. I will reject this temple that I have made holy to honor my name. I will make it an object of mockery and ridicule among the nations. And though this temple is impressive now, all who pass by will be appalled. They will ask, why did the Lord do such terrible things to this land and to this temple? And the answer will be, because his people abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, ancestors who brought them out of Egypt, and they worshipped other gods instead and bowed down to them. That is why he has brought all these disasters on them. You can read for yourself what I read for about a year straight, Ezekiel 8, Ezekiel 9, Ezekiel 10. He said it would happen, and it did. Thank God we're not there. But judgment is coming. And when Jesus Christ sent letters to his beloved blood bought saved by grace born again church he sent extreme warnings mm -hmm. and you know what he wanted from them love they had great ministries thriving ministries great reputations what about the people who came casting out demons and all the miracles no love, no real love, no real love. And you can read it for yourself. We might read it, what is today, Friday? 
Who knows, we might read all this Sunday. Because it is not a joke when the glory of the Lord leaves the temple. And if we get so accustomed to the glory, I, I want you to understand the people had not left the temple. They just left God. The leaders, everybody's still there, do, going through their emotions, sinning in secret, doing detestable things in the dark. The Bible talks about this. They had not left the temple. They just left God. What's happened to the church in America? Not all of them. God has his bride everywhere. Jesus has his bride everywhere. But many people have not left the temple. And what I mean is sanctuaries and buildings. We are the temple. They just left God. And I don't want us to have some false sense of security just because we're here all the time. Just because we're here in the glory all the time. We must be much more devoted to our God than our idea of the glory. Much more devoted to our God because he is coming. He is coming. And I don't want him to come and find us worshiping something we thought we were just being entertained by. I don't want him to come and, and find us setting ourselves up to be idolized because we long to be desired. Would you put on some, Elise, go think of something. And whatever you want to put on, whatever you feel, put something on. And I, I just want to open the altars. We're not going to like, make a real, I'm not going to make another, I'm not making any real big deal about anything, because I, I feel like this is a real big deal right here. I, I really urge everyone to be more loving and more joyful than you've ever been about God. Really live from his desire. Don't try to work your way to heaven. Understand how much he passionately desires you. And let that, it's like I was talking about on Wednesday night. The path that we get to God on is the path of his own choosing and desire of us. We, we, can't, we can't save ourselves. We can never make God love us. He desires us so much. But I want you to be much more serious about him much more serious about this God who loves you. I want us to be actually meditating on the word where we're thinking his thoughts and not our own. Not just our own. I'm, I'm not saying blank your mind out. Think. <laughs> he gave you a mind. Think. <laughs> think about him. Think about what pleases him. Do a fast. You know? If you've never fasted, I really urge you to fast something. We can talk more about that later. Fasting, you know, not to be more filled with power, but to die to your flesh, be more sensitive to his spirit, to humble ourselves. We need to humble ourselves, and not just to be free of pain, not just to get healed of a disease. That's wonderful. It's wonderful. I believe in it. I believe, in fact, the Lord spoke to me today. We will see many, 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 many healings. It's probably will amp up, and that's awesome. But your relationship with him, your heart toward him. Wednesday, we talked about his heart toward us. But our hearts must be turned to him and stay there. He was so pleased here. He was so pleased that he came and just wanted to stay with them. And my concern is just like Samson. He had played around for so long with what the Lord told him not to do. 
from childhood, and he, the Lord was always with him. So when he shook himself again, he didn't know the Lord had departed. I, I think churches across America had no idea the glory of the Lord left. Because it wasn't about the Lord anymore, it was about the people. The Lord is talking to me about my life. I, I want you to open your heart and let him talk to you about yours. Okay? So hopefully you don't need like a director. Because I'm not trying to direct this, okay? I think we all know the Lord enough that hopefully if somebody does need prayer and somebody doesn't have a clue what I'm talking about or you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time, we want to do that, okay? But right now I want the people of this church, the people who have just lived in the glory of God, you've got miracle after miracle deliverance after deliverance awakening upon awakening I want you to come and make sure that your heart is turned toward the Lord and if you know it's not begin to pray with everything you have that he'll wake you up wake you up that's what I've been asking God give me dreams that shake me awake give me dreams that shake me awake God Lord we don't want to be bored with you Lord, we don't want to get so accustomed to your glory that we start building idols. We start bringing idols into the temple, into the sanctuary. You know, the two main things I can see that cause the glory of God to leave are idols in the temple and foreigners serving in the sanctuary, as in people who don't know God. Now we have literally images of all kind of things set up in churches. And most people serving at churches don't know. I remember talking to a woman and, and uh, well, the, the man, and he said, well, I like to come here, but my girlfriend, an atheist with idols all over her house, likes to serve here, so we go here. God, have mercy on us, Lord. God, have mercy. God, have mercy. God, help us never to think we're worshiping in you. And really, there are just idols in the temple. Help us never pattern after the world. God, we want to be pleasing to you. We want you to be pleased here. We want you to be here because you, you like being here, Lord. I want you to feel comfortable in my heart with my thoughts. Don't think you can't just be another way. Don't think you can't be another way than you are. Don't think you can't be another way than you are. We're under no obligation to do what our sinful nature urges us to do. And when the Bible talks about if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It, it, it's not so much about the hand, but being tangled up in sin. Anything that engages you and pulls you into idolatry and pulls you in to prostitution of God pulls you into detestable practices. Cut it off. Lord, forgive us for fear of man. Forgive us for, for giving a flying flip what anybody thinks of us than you. Forgive us for even knowing what they like better than we know what you like. Forgive us for being so in tune with so many people and so out of tune with you. Forgive us for waiting till services to be in your presence. Oh, Jesus. 
Jesus has for humbling ourselves. You haven't left. You have not left us, but we humble ourselves anyway, God. We're not trying to get you to do anything. We just love you. We we thank you for being here, God. Thank you that we've always enjoyed your beautiful presence. Help us not take you for granted, Lord. We're not trying to get you to fill this place with people. We just want to, as long as you're here, God. As long as you're here, God. As long as your beautiful presence is here. Lord, if you're here, the people will come. But we don't want to focus on anything but you. God, forgive us. God, forgive us. And Lord, would you just help us to get our eyes on you, Jesus? We know you're coming soon. We know you're coming soon. Your word says you're coming soon. And it's sooner now than when we first believed. Yes, amen. Yes. 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 Come on, I pray that you will ask the Lord to help you get rid of every place of compromise. Every place of compromise for whatever reason, whether it's fear of men or fear of the enemy. Lord, we want to live in the perfect fear of the Lord. We want to live in the fear of the Lord. I pray humbly God that you begin to reveal to each person any places of idolatry because we don't want to worship anything other than you we don't want to worship our idea of what our life should look like us up, Lord. Wake us up to your glory. Wake us up to the urgency, Lord. I have a question for you. How many of you feel like, and I'm, I'm asking you this because I felt it, like you know the Lord's told you things, he's given you some warnings, some things to do, and you're like, Yes, yes to all of it with your mind, but it almost feels like you're in a dreamlike state thinking you have more time. Raise your hand if that's you. You're like, I'm going to do it at some point. I'm going to do it. I'm serious. I'm going to do it at some point. I think we got time. I'm telling you, we don't. I'm trying to say, whatever the Lord's put in your heart to do, do it. Don't wait on anything or anyone. Do it. Our time is short. The time is short. If you feel like you should be evangelizing your neighborhood, start in the morning. If you feel like you're supposed to call someone and witness to them, do it tomorrow. That's why I wrote this post. That post that I just wrote is just about my worst nightmare. It's one, it'd be one of my worst nightmares uh, for a lot of reasons. So I did it before I came up here and read the Bible. 
because time is short. Time is short. And the calling of God on your life, and we're called to Himself, right? We're called to go, that's the high calling on our life. But I'm talking about the things that He's called you to do here on earth. Do it. Stop waiting to be the person that can do it. And it might not look, I will say, it will not look like you think it's supposed to look. When the Lord asked me, so you've known this, and your children, and the, the children in the church, okay, so they're safe from all that. But what about the others? And he said, you said that you would accept the mantle, a man, not, I'm not the only one, but of John the Baptist. And he said, I told you to count the cost. And you saw how lonely it would be at times and how nobody would support you in it and, and, or understand it. And he said, but what about these places? You still care what people think. People that don't care what you think, you care what they think. Most of the people that you care what they think, they don't care what you think. It's true. I want us to be in a place, and I am urging you. I just came off of a fast, and the reason I went on the fast is the Lord said, it will, you, strongholds in your life will be broken, and they were. And you'll be more sensitive to my spirit, and I said, yes, Lord, this is what I want. I'm not willing to lose this again. So I'm urging you, do whatever you've got to do. Stop living like everybody around you. Even if they're in a little fiery community, stop it. Come out from among the world. Some of you need to come out from among your friend groups. That was actually the thing that I was going to say. If you're in this church and you're like texting other people in the church, stop it. Save it for later. It's divisive. We'll talk more about that later, a little more housekeeping. But I'm serious. There's so many things people are involved in that's keeping them complacent. Most of it is other people's opinions. You care so much what somebody thinks of you, you're not willing to do what God has asked. You came out of a trap in the world, came right into a trap in the church. Because we care what everybody thinks. I don't anymore. As of tonight, God help me tomorrow. I know that if if he had returned for me before today, I would have been found wanting, saved, saved, but not having carried out what he told me to do. I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. With every eye open, who can think of one to three to four places that you're tangled up and you need to disentangle yourself? Raise your hand and keep them up, please, because I want to see. Do yourself a favor. Write every place down tonight. Do it now. Write it down. Get your phone out. Unless you've already thrown your phone away. Just kidding. <laughs> Write on a piece of paper. Keep yourself accountable. Because you're, you're going to want to forget about it tomorrow. What if he comes tomorrow? I'm telling you, this church, yes, this church, is in a lullaby, sleepy state. You know, coming to this church doesn't mean you're right with God. I just want to remind you. Eyes, coming to eyes on Jesus does not mean your eyes are on Jesus. And we won't be your judge anyway. Kevin will not be sitting on the floor. Well, you were late so many times. <laughs> Oh, he's 
so jealous. He's so kind. If, if you're here tonight and you haven't given your life to Jesus and you want to, I want to open the rugs, the altar for you to come. We'd love to pray with you. If you want to turn from your life of sin, repent of your sin, place your trust in Christ. If you're on live stream, let me know. I want to pray for you. I don't even know if they can see me. I don't know if we have a camera person tonight. That's okay. You did? Okay. Um, and you want to come and give your life to Jesus. We want to pray with you. Thank you, Lord. Tiffany, thank you for sending that dream to me. And thank you for sharing it tonight. Can you see who cares about a good service if God's not pleased? Can you see how we could get focused on good services? Just because we're not the typical seeker-sensitive we could get so whatever sensitive. You know, I remember one time a guy walked in and he said, uh, I'm here to experience the presence of God. And uh, he had been invited to a, a worship event and he thought, he said he's a worship leader from another state and he said, I've never experienced the presence of God. Young boy. And Baylor had felt that night, earlier that day, to invite people like she used to would have invited them to her show to see her. She invited them to her church to meet God. And he saw that. And um, otherwise he had said he was going to go home and resign uh, as worship leader because he, he couldn't feel the presence of God. And my natural mind went, oh, we could sing this, this, and this. Like, I know what will bring the presence of God. I'm just, I thought, the presence of the Lord gets so strong, usually, when, you know. Just because we're magnifying God. It's not about the song, it's that he's magnified. And, uh, and then I was like, we'll do whatever God wants, but he'll, oh, he will feel the presence of, you know what I mean? Like, in my heart, I'm just like, praise the Lord, you know. Got up here, and I felt the Lord told me to it, stop it. Like, I think it was maybe the second song. Do you remember that night? I think it was maybe, who remembers it? I think it was like the second song, Cut It Off. We didn't finish that song, I don't think. And I read chapter after chapter after chapter after chapter of the Bible. And then I did an altar call for Christians, Christians who don't know Christ. He was the first one down. Come to find out he had a lot, among other things. I don't know if he'd ever repented of his sins or even heard that he needed to. He had, never, he had, he had so much bitterness against his parents, not even a thought to forgive them. As he forgave them and got born again, he experienced the presence of God. Anybody catch an idea of how serious it is? Read Ezekiel. Well, we'll probably read it on Sunday. Or Sunday night. It's awful. When judgment started at the house of God, and it will again, it was all a slaughter. Even the children. And I'm telling you, the glory of God leaves churches who have replaced God with their idols. 
and then people are panicked for their children and their children are just being tormented by the demons behind the idols they have worshipped. Oh. Do you see why we need eyes to see and ears to hear? Do you see how you just get talked into things and just go along with whatever else anybody wants to say and do? You need to know the Word of God and have sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Do you know who taught me all this? God. As I, as I read His Word, He breathed life on His Word. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. We're not pleasing you at all. And now again, eight years later, he's looking at me with eyes of love, but so much, so much jealousy. He's so serious. I wouldn't even want to worship a God who wasn't. Who do you even want God to be? What kind of God is it you want? You ever thought about that? What kind of God is it that people want? I like a God who's in control. I don't want to tell him what to do. I like a God who has a set plan and I bow my knee to him. Make it real for us, Lord. Lord, would you please, I'm asking God, that you give us, because we are so human. He says, then be filled with my spirit. We, we are so human. And when we're not being filled with the Spirit to overflowing, He's just showing me how quickly idols could come in. Especially if I want y'all to like me. If I want to keep y'all's approval, I'll do whatever you say. I'm not willing to. I don't care if we don't seem to make any progress for three more years. I'm going to sit right here and wait on God. I remember one time a couple of people were trying to talk Kevin into doing some things a few years ago. And he brought it to me. And I could feel the pressure. I, I could really feel the pressure maybe four years ago and I knew Kevin wasn't you know where he is now he knew it too we were all honest about it so I was really hesitant and I knew the two talking to him weren't filled with the Holy Spirit really not not in an overflowing relationship and not to where we need to follow anything they were saying I'm just being honest And I opened the Bible and it said, with all these miracles and all the Lord have done, they refused to wait for his counsel. I said, there's my answer. We're not doing it. <laughs> Y'all, it wouldn't take but about two weeks for the glory to leave. And then we'd keep doing things to fool ourselves. As long as people would spawn, we, we think we still had. I'd rather lose everything and everybody than Jesus. I don't need so much affirmation or confirmations. I don't need a thumbs up or a heart from anybody. But in order for that to be real, 
He's got to be more real. See, as long as I hear him, I know what he's saying, I'll follow him. But if I can't hear him, I'll start listening to somebody else. Anybody? Are you tracking with me? You're resonating? Because I'm not just talking about eyes on Jesus, I'm talking about you. You're the temple. I never know how to dismiss, but I certainly don't know how to dismiss this one. And please don't think this is any different than Wednesday. It's all desire. That's why he gets jealous. He doesn't get jealous for us because he's mean. He gets jealous because he desires us so much. in case anybody thinks, well, that's real Old Testament. Just please go read Revelations again. And I know people are saying that Revelation won't happen because we're going to overturn all the negative prophecies. That is hogwash. That is hogwash. And it's going to be a rude awakening. I would rather be rudely awakened now. And I hope that you've seen tonight, I'm not talking about just being awakened to the evil that's going on in America. Yeah, there's a lot of evil in America. The government's not going to fix that. The real evil is in the hearts. And the evil to be concerned about is in the heart of the church. Not in politics. That's that's of some concern, of course, of course. Yes, yes. But the hearts of kings are in the hand of God. So, our salvation does not depend on an election or things getting overturned or. If you come to this church, oh, let's see, this is Kevin, okay. If you're part of this church and you can see, oh man, some things need to change, and you know right now that you need something more from us, if we can do it to help you be ready, call it out right now. Because I'm going to be listening to the Lord. But what I don't want to maintain good services. I want to help you be ready for the return of the Lord. I want to help present you as a pure bride. I want to be a pure bride. I'm not interested in, I'm certainly not interested in helping y'all maintain y'all's friendships. That's the last thing I care about. Y'all got a problem with each other, watch each other's feet, forgive each other and go on. And there's a lot to say about all that. Uh, we, we need unity, okay? We've got to be in unity. And I feel like the Lord was showing me, tell them some things that unity is not. Uni unity is not going deep and sharing your heart with each other. Unity is for the sake of the gospel being, us moving forward. It's to do the work of the Lord. It's not to bond with each other. It's not to find out who likes who and how they're doing. Who cares how they're doing? That's probably gossip anyway. The more you bond, the more people get talked about typically. Stop it. You want to make God mad? Keep doing that. Stop it. When I'm saying unity, I mean forgiving when you have no resolve. 
forgiving for the sake of Christ and moving on, okay? I refuse to keep trying to maintain things here. <laughs> Heidi, <laughs> I can't take it. Heidi, Heidi's like this. She's so pleased. <laughs> That's another service. <laughs> So I'm not saying, how can we help you feel better? Except for the babies. I am saying that, because some of you need your diaper changed. I heard Kenneth Hagin saying something in a sermon. I'm going to clip it. When I can find it again, I'm going to clip it. It's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. It's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Kenneth Hagin says that he was... Um, and I couldn't care less what anybody thinks about him. That's another thing. I'm going to quit caring what anybody thinks about anything in the name of Jesus. Okay. Um, <laughs> because I love the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Kenneth Hagin said, the Lord gave him a vision, told him that it person in their church that was pretty neat in, in the Lord. He said he lost his temper and started cussing at, at work, and now he, he thinks uh, he's ashamed and don't want to come to church. Go go help him out or whatever. So he goes to the guy's house, and the guy wouldn't even look at him. He was so ashamed. And so he helped him through that and restored him, and he said, we're not giving you up. Come on to church. Hey, if you sin, the best place to be is in church. Amen. Don't go hide somewhere. You can get yourself right or just go to hell or give up on God or something. No. We want to be a place where people are just a mess. And come right here and bring it all to Jesus. He didn't come to call the righteous but the sinners. Amen. No, we don't want you to stay in it and play in it and get everybody else dirty with it. Don't you come out of it, but you can't clean yourself up and come to God. Anyway, so he goes and the guy comes back and it's awesome. And then Brother Hagin was shaving again. Second time this happened. And the Lord said, he's done it again. Go restore him again. So as he shows up at his house, he'd cussed again at work, lost his temper, restored him again. And uh, he said it was the last time that happened. And uh, anyway, somebody that was a deacon or an elder or something. So some other guy who had been in the, in the Lord 29 years comes and says, Brother Hagen's been at whatever's house twice in one week, and he hadn't come to visit me once. And... And then Brother Hagen said, Yeah, and I'm not going to either, you big baby. <laughs> he said, You should be out visiting people. And he said, The guy got really mad and peeled rubber and stormed out, drove, peeled out, whatever. A little while later, came back with his head hanging down. And he said, Brother Hagen, I talked to God about you. <laughs> and he said, he was harder on me than you were. You're right on the biggest baby in the church. We'll leave that for Kevin. Anyway, so changing diapers, feeding babies, yes. Um, other things, no. I'm not live to please anybody but Jesus. I'm, I'm kind of... Sh Anybody shaking up tonight? For real? And I, I'm pretty shaken up at all he showed me that I haven't done. I knew things I'd done. 
I didn't know what I hadn't done. You know what I mean? Who would be interested? You don't have to raise your hand. Just gotta give me an eye. <laughs> Deja, I laughed her so hard today. She wanted to ask me something. She said, just blink once or twice. Because she knew I didn't, might not want to say something in front of everybody in the coffee shop. So she said, just blink once or twice. I'm like, that is awesome code. So y'all don't have to raise your hand because I just know peer pressure. I won't even ask you anything. We're going to do a fast together soon. And you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, what I'd like is for everybody to be fasting regularly. But some people have never fasted at all, so you got to start there, you know. <laughs> that at all. <laughs> um, and praying, more, more prayer together, more worship at your house, more praying in the Spirit. Well, <laughs> I know. Here we all are. <laughs> Let me look at live stream. <laughs> Mike and Michelle want to be a pure bride. Isn't it interesting how you'll hear, humble yourselves, if my people humble yourselves. And then some, some have heard about how the glory came in. But not always all the rest, huh? And people are like, well, that's Old Testament. Well, so is all the crusades and camp meetings and stuff designed around humbling yourself so we can get COVID out. That's Old Testament, too. So what about it? You know what I'm saying? So is Psalm 91 that you stand on. <laughs> you just want to stand on anything that makes you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> I get we're under a better covenant, but it's the same God. So it's just interesting that Solomon gave this prayer, and then God gave a response. And he said what he would do. And, and when we read through Ezekiel, some of that with Ezekiel, I'm telling you, for a year, I would wake up at 3, and there's where I would turn every time. It was Ezekiel 8, where God would take me. Ezekiel 8 and 9. And he just didn't pray. And I remember when I, the first time I talked to Roland Baker, talking to him about this, and I said, <laughs> I said, you know, from what I can tell, <laughs> what made the glory of God leave the temple was Idols in the in the temple and foreigners serving the sanctuary. And he looked at me and said, anything can be an idol. Well, I knew that, but now a few years later, I know that. You know? Here's something. If, if there's something in your life that you think might be an idol, but you're not sure, if you've had that thought tonight, if you're like, it could be, but I'm not sure. Anybody raise your hand if you've had that thought about something tonight. Some things you know, and some things you're like, I'm not sure. Give it up for three weeks and see. Give it up for three weeks. Give it completely up. If it's a person, don't talk to them. If it's a substance, don't drink it or use it. If you can't give it up, you'll know it's an idol. Even think of giving it up. If you go, 
It's an idol. <laughs> oh, but do you see how church could be an idol? Well, we know seeker sensitive churches can be an idol. But what about firelands? Those two. I don't mean, you know, we need to come together. I just mean trying to orchestrate and, and, and tell everybody and show. Like, I'd rather keep Jesus. And then sitting here, the Lord starts showing me it's all, it's idolatry. It's idolatry. And then the, the, the parents' idolatry is what torments the children. And America's in an uproar about the children, but it's the parents' idolatry. I'm appalled. I'm appalled at how much the church loves the world. Imagine how he feels. Well, you know, the word says, yeah, the word says come out from among them and be separate, but like, you can't win anybody that way. Think of all the ways his word is completely ignored for a better system. You want to tell us why you're crying? You don't have to. Okay. Thank you. I don't even know if I'll get through it, but um, we'd be shocked if you did. <laughs> um, I might be the biggest baby in the room. <laughs> 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 Didn't have to wait on Kevin. <laughs> he, would not, he would not choose you, Kristen. <laughs> no, I'm just like so thankful today. I'm just feeling so thankful. Um, this is the uh, one year mark of when I was in the hospital last year. And I'm just he didn't he didn't have to keep me alive. You know, I, I could have died and, you know, but I'm just, I'm, I'm not so much thankful that he kept me alive, but I'm just thankful and the reason why he kept me alive because he knew that, sorry, he knew that my heart wasn't right. Oh, it's true. Are y'all listening? I was sitting in that hospital bed like, woe is me. You're in no hurry, Kristen. Don't be. Do you know that more than I cry out for more souls, and maybe he'll take me there. I do sometimes, but mainly I'm crying out, God, show us our state. Show us our own hearts. Don't let us fool ourselves, Lord. I mean, the whole time, like, I was in the hospital for three weeks, and everyone just kept, I mean, I had so many people praying, and I'm thankful for that, but he even that didn't really do anything, like, but I'm just thankful, because afterwards, you know, like, <laughs> by a miracle, like, my eyes were open, and <laughs> I just saw, I saw him, and I saw, like, <laughs> I don't know, I just recognize the urgency of changing my life and my heart. 
And, you know, for two years, like, he had been telling me to, to come here. And I ignored it because I because of one thing or another, whatever. Uh, all the excuses and, like... But after that, it was like, yes. Yes, like, everything you, you want me to do, yes. You know, and... Y'all, like... Ever since we got here, it's just been one blessing after another. It's like... Every time another one comes in, I'm like, Lord, like, what did I do to deserve this blessing? Like, <laughs> you used to wonder what you'd done to deserve the bad, right? Yeah. Like that you didn't deserve that. And now... <laughs> Year, like almost a year later, I'm just like, <laughs> you know, so I'm a bit wrecked tonight. <laughs> I'm just thankful, you know, and everything that you said tonight is just really even struck more of a chord. I mean, like, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, when you were saying, like, we need to do a fast, like, I've never, like, I've done fasting, but I don't think I've actually done fasting, if that makes sense. I don't think it was ever for the right reasons, and so I'm actually pretty excited about it, but I need to know how to do it. <laughs> so, okay. help me. <laughs> okay. Okay. I said, what do you need help with, right? <laughs> I want to do that and you know uh, initially I thought okay well my phone's a huge one because it's all I'm ever on and so um, you know ditch the phone or you know get rid of all the things on it whatever you know just use it as a phone <laughs> um, and then like the thoughts that came up in my head was like oh but there's that one YouTube channel that you really like to watch and it's silly it's like this person who goes and buys antiques like it's nothing like it's literally like whatever but like I enjoy that and that's like the time I get to me and I'm just realizing like that time could be for him and not me it's not about me so like that was huge I was like okay YouTube's an idol <laughs> you know do you know the Lord showed me when Elijah was really little, I had a dream. And in my dream, there was a, a toy snake and Elijah was practicing a, a bow and arrow. And suddenly that toy snake became a real snake in our house. And I pulled a gun. And as the dream was ending, I heard, you too. And I thought, and I thought until yesterday that it was like, oh, God. I thought it was like the bad stuff that the people are trying to get our kids to see with the pornography and all that. Lord, show me. Because Elijah identified when he first started being tormented. He was like three or four years old watching a cartoon on YouTube. I was looking for a more, more obvious snake. And, and the Lord said, it, it, it wasn't the things that are coming out now. It's what's entertained and lulled and comforted. Right, like it seems so innocent to want to watch this lady go buy antiques, but like for like that could be hours of just watching these videos over and over again it's taking up the time that I could have been spending with the Lord or with my family yeah because then we'll like get our time in with God if and then do what we really want to do right mm -hmm. do what we really love when you think of it that way it's Okay, we need to do this with God so then we can, like, go do... Okay, let's do this first. The boys see it in themselves. Okay, let's read the Bible. We're ready to go play football. 
Can you play football? I can't play football. But what do you love? Who do you love? Because whoever we love more than God is an idol. It doesn't matter if that's our mama <laughs> or cigarettes. You know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be like the... That's what I'm saying about this whole Disney agenda. It didn't just become evil. I mean, do you know how many churches had Frozen <laughs> as like a play? We're, we're talking about evil spells and, and witchcraft. It's witchcraft. And the church is like, people love it. What are we doing? So now, <laughs> now Disney's crossed the line? And, and I'm not just harping on Disney, I'm just saying that now all of a sudden, everybody wants to make a deal of it. And they're like, sorry guys, we might even have to give up Disney. I'm like, are you kidding me? We might. Anyway, but see, I can't even talk too much about that because I was like, you've said nothing except to the people who got it. What if John the Baptist had said, only repent to the ones who liked it? That's the point I'm trying to make, is the Lord's like, so you kept yours and the church kids safe. What about the other children? Do they not deserve to know? Just because their parents might not like you? Just because they might unfollow you? Just because they might talk about you? And I think I just kind of rested because, like, well, people think I'm weird anyway, you know. And I kind of rested in, I've said enough. We just started. Because it's real. Because God is real. Because He... He is both kind and severe because He's our, our Savior and He will be our judge. And these precious children are being tormented by their parents' idols. Whatever entertains you, start thinking about what you're entertained by. All He's ever wanted or people who would love him and trust him and for his desire of them to be enough for them. It's just our hearts turn so quickly to other things and ways to feel desired and to the things we desire. And, you know? I mean, it's not like Ezekiel 16. You know, she became a prostitute. It's not like uh, she was someone God didn't like. He married her, and his love for her was not enough for her. She wanted to be, she wanted to feel desired. In fact, in Ezekiel 16, she paid. She paid for the people to come and be with her. She wasn't doing it for money. She's given money to feel desired. So, I just don't think that we have any clue how serious it all is. Like, we know a little. I'll say that. We do know a little. But we have no real idea. Which is why I keep saying, give us dreams that shake us awake, God. Thank you for that dream, God. Can we say thank you, God? Thank you for the dreams, Lord. How many in this room have been having dreams about end times and terrifying dreams and that start giving you like an idea of, like, and you're just like, wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You know, the day of the Lord is not just going to be like him coming back in a limousine you know, white horse limousine, and we <laughs> s step out on the runway in our beautiful ball gown dress, 
It's the great and terrible day of the Lord. It's going to just be awful. The worst thing anybody's ever seen. No movie could come close to that day. So really, we don't want to just keep sleeping and putting it off. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. Let the godly pray while there is still time, that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. And this was after the flood. So there's still a flood coming. There's a flood coming. And so, and then just don't get so caught up thinking that it's all something that it's not. You know, and I'm speaking politically. It's not just all about that, okay? So, thank you, Lord. I guess we could go to bed and have a dream that'll shake us awake. <laughs> Fasting and feasting. I would say the feasting has helped me more than the fasting. Feasting on His Word. Returning to meditation in His Word has returned me back to His heart. Closer to His heart. It's the meditation. And then with the meditation, my words are becoming more acceptable to Him. Uh, so more than I would encourage you to even fast, I would say feast. Feast. And if you do fast, don't forget to feast. <laughs> fast. You know, if, if you're not ready for fa to fast food yet, fast worry. Fast complaining. Fast negativity. Fast your phone. <laughs> you see how, I mean, where is that about cutting your hand? off <laughs> I just I just wanted to show you in the amplified real quick got my NLT back tonight but uh, I'm kind of stuck on this amplified now Matthew what I'm not read the whole thing I don't think Matthew 527 but good night love y'all Okay. <laughs> 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 Listen to this. Matthew five. Yeah, twenty we'll just do twenty seven. You've heard that it was said you should not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who so much as looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye makes you stumble and leads you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. Say it. Matthew, will you say that in the microphone, baby? Matthew, Matthew, will you say that in the microphone? It's just hard to do that if you still love it, you know? If you don't hate your sin, it's. Does anybody resonate now more, now that we've read a lot of that, with what I was talking about, how you can really want to be free of your bondage? And be delivered from pain like the children when to come out of Egypt. But if your heart is not to be free of sin, because it grieves God, being delivered out of Egypt is not going to help you. Do you see what I'm saying? The glory coming to our church is not going to help us if we do not leave the idols. They left Egypt, but Egypt was still in them. They came out of Egypt. It's like come out from the, among the world and be separate. It's like coming out of the world, but the world's still in you. Being delivered and delivered and delivered and delivered and delivered and healed and healed and healed will not ultimately help you. 
Do you see what I'm saying? The children of Israel, so what? So awesome, amazing, awesome, glorifying God. But for them, it did them no good because they all died in the wilderness. Because they wanted to be free of their slavery, but not their sin. They wanted to be free of their bondage, but not their sin in their hearts. Do you see? So what good will it do for you to be in glory-filled service after glory-filled service? If you're the temple that His glory resides in, or... Can you see what a tragedy it would be for start focusing on getting more glory? Help more people? Come on. You know, let's get more glory. It's not a fog machine, you know. So, but I thought that was so interesting the way the Amplified put that. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your right hand makes you stumble and leads you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. And it was just so interesting what Baylor said. I just walked up to her and just violently, get off your phone. And I said, well, then consider yourself warned by Jesus, whatever it's about. It says, remove yourself. This compares cutting your hand off with removing yourself from the source of temptation. I was always concerned. Oh, awesome. I was, I realized you're, thank you, Lord, praise the Lord. I was always concerned that if I really said what I believed, Someone who knew more than me about the Word of God, some uh, wonderfully uh, grounded um, man of God would say, well, no, actually this, this, this. And then one day I thought, well, that's actually my dream. It's not my fear as much as my dream. How, how joyful it would be to be, like, corrected by a man of God who knows God loves the word. I'd be so happy. I was like, so what is my real fear? Because I would love that. And I thought, oh, I'm, I'm not saying things. And the only people that would correct me, because once I spent years checking out posts and diving into this and that and this and that, I was mainly finding people who love the world and didn't, give much attention to the word. And then the people that I felt are grounded in the word and love Jesus are like, yes, that's true. And then like the revelations I would get would be confirmed by Smith Wigglesworth and Derek Prince. I mean, every single time. Even recently, the Lord said, okay, now that you're back, you don't have to explain yourself this time. I was like, really? I just, and within like, a week or two, I hear Derek Prince say, for a long time I didn't say things or something like that because I would get so busy trying to explain myself. He said, and the Lord said, you don't have to explain it, just proclaim it. I'm like, confirmation again. Every time the Lord has told me something that I haven't heard in like a, what I consider a safe place, he will within weeks confirm it through a preacher that I, in my opinion, finished well. And now people are just like, the word is so optional, if that, I roll. That I couldn't care less what any of those people think about what I say. So I'm just saying for me, that was a big step. It shouldn't have been so big tonight, you know. Um, so I'm breaking free of a fear of man again, that I even know was there. I thought, because I like, ah, here. That was enough. <laughs> like, <laughs> or whatever. Repent. 
But oh, how many children you need to know? And how many parents might actually like to know? Who knows? Yeah, but I just don't want to be like, be like, oh, now we're at a place that people travel from all over to experience this presence and not say the things that might make a lot of people mad. I don't care if it makes him happy. You know. Just pursue an, a personal awakening. Pursue that. There's nothing better to pursue than, than him. You know? Just pursue that. If you think you're in kind of that sleepy stage, just go after him. Just pray in the spirit more. Just pray. And receive his love and listen to, to, to men and women who are really on fire. Forget all this other mess. I'm probably bringing you down anyway. Forget it. Forget it. Forget all the mess. Forget all the mess. You don't straighten it out anyway. <laughs> Might as well be on fire for the Lord. You know? Because you're not going to... You're right. You're not going to win people with intellectual... You might impress them or be depressed, but the fire of God and the love of God, then that'll reach out and just... 